Right, final part of this paper now. So, first of all, we'll start off with a nice equilibrium, um, good old Harbour process. Uh, calculate KC, there you go. Um, so, again, just remember square brackets um, and you are um, happy. Okay, uh, so now we're going to do a calculation. So, I've written the um, equilibrium down here again. It just helps, helps a little bit to sort this out. So, so let's put these um, numbers in. So for nitrogen, I have got 10.4 moles, uh, hydrogen 22.5, and none of ammonia to start off with. And after I've reached equilibrium, I've ended up with 5.60 moles of ammonia. So you can see it is a one to two reaction. So going, I must have lost, um, 5.6 divided by 2 moles of nitrogen, which is 2.8. So I'm left with 7.6 moles of nitrogen. For hydrogen, um, it's a 2 to 3. So if I take 5.6 divided by 2 times by 3, that gives me 8.4. So I've lost 8.4 moles of hydrogen. So I'm left with... 14.1 moles of hydrogen. Now I need to work out their concentrations. So I'm going to take each of these numbers and divide by 5 because that is the um, total volume of the chamber. So those are my concentrations now in moles per decimeter cubed and I have to pop that into my Kc now. So here I go. Kc, just the one at the top, is going to be 1.12 squared divided by the 1.52 times 2.82 cubed. And if you do that, you'll get 0 0.0368. For units, it's, go it's going to be uh, moles per decimeter cubed squared over moles per decimeter cubed to the power of 4 so that's going to cancel, that will cancel to become now squared so your units will end up being moles to the minus 2 decimeters to the 6 um, so just down the bottom here I've rewritten Kc and also the equilibrium equation just to help us with this bit so the chemist heats a mixture to a higher temperature at constant pressure. What would happen to Kc? Well, if I heat the mixture, it's an exothermic reaction. So the equilibrium will be shifted to the left-hand side. So this will get larger. And this will get smaller. And so Kc will get smaller because the forward reaction is exothermic. The pressure, inc the chemist increases the pressure of the mixture. What will K? What will happen to Kc? Kc will stay the same. Kc is only dependent on temperature. Um, it is not changed by pressure. So we move on to electropotentials now, and I've got a couple of redox systems there, and we set up the standard. Uh, a student uh, a student sets up a standard cell in the lab based on these two. And they want me to draw a diagram, which I have done. Um, obviously, uh, for the uh, iron equilibrium, number two, um, there aren't any solid metals in there. And therefore, I have to use a platinum electrode. Um, but apart from that, it's all quite straightforward. Conditions are 298 Kelvin and uh, all concentrations are at one mole per decimeter cubed. Overall cell reaction. Okay, well, for my overall cell reaction you hopefully can see that this one is a more positive so that one the chromium will go backwards and this will go forward but in equilibrium number one i've got three electrons so to get it to balance i need to times my iron by three so the overall cell reaction will be three fe three plus plus chromium goes to chromium 3 plus plus F 
E2+, plus, and I got three of those as well. Write down the standard cell potential. Well, the standard cell potential is the difference between these two values. So it's going to be 0 0.77 uh, minus minus 0 0.74. So that's uh, going to give you a total of 1.51 volts. Um, the sign of the chromium uh, electrode will be negative. If you have a look, that this one is the more negative E value. Um, compared to iron, which is plus 0.77, whereas chromium is minus 0.74. Right, to explain um, B, I've just written the two electrode potentials down again. So the student has solid uh, uh, chromium trichloride um, and stirs it to dissolve up the chromium trichloride, and the cell potentials decrease. Why is that? Okay, well... I am effectively adding more chromium 3, well I am if adding more chromium 3 plus. If I do so, this equilibrium will be shifted to the right hand side. If it shifts to the right, it means there are fewer electrons and therefore this cell potential gets more positive. If this gets more positive, the difference between this thing and this electrode and this value will become smaller. So let's say this becomes more positive and it ends up being minus 0 0.54. Well, now the difference is going to be much smaller. It's going to be 0 0.77 plus 0 0.54, which is going to be 1.31 volts compared to 1.51 volts it was previously. Okay, so I now need to work out the half equation. Um, so basically, what you need to do is you need to add an equation to this one, which when added together, is going to give you that one. So uh, let's have a look. You're obviously going to need to have two um, of those uh, methanoic acids. The oxygen you've dealt with, so that's okay. Um, you're going to, uh, the water is gone, so that's okay. You'll need to be able to produce 2 CO2 and over this side you're going to need to add 4 H plus because um, that hasn't appeared there. Um, Oh, no, wait a minute, we're not going to, we need to remove that, don't we? Because that doesn't appear in the overall equation. So the 4H plus is going to go that side, so it gets cancelled out. And then finally you need to look at your equations, uh, your electrons rather. Um, so you've got four electrons there, so you're going to have uh, four electrons there as well to add on. So it's, um, you can simplify that by dividing by 2 if you like to give you H, C, O, O, H goes to 2, C, O, 2 plus 2, oh, sorry, goes to C, O, 2 plus 2, H plus plus 2 electrons. Uh, so why would this cell be better than hydrogen? Well, um, clue is in here really. Uh, methanoic acid is a liquid and therefore much easier to transport than hydrogen gas. Okay, so uh, let's start where we can use some numbers um, for this one. So we have got um, a concentration of uh, KMnO4 and also the titer. So the first thing I'm going to work out are the moles of K. MnO4, which is going to be the volume, 25.4, times by the concentration, divided by 1,000, and that gives you 3.81 times 10 to the 4, minus 4 moles of potassium uh, per manganate, uh, or manganate 7. Okay, so they've told me that in the titration it's a 2 to 5 ratio. So moles of SO3 to minus 
is going to be this number here uh, divided by 2 times by 5 and that gives you 9.525 times 10 to the minus 4. Right, so that was in 25.0 centimetres cubed up here. But you'll notice up here it was originally in 250. So I need to times that by 10. So moles of SO3 to minus in 250 centimetres cubed is going to be 9.525 times 10 to the minus 3. So now I have moles, I can find mass. So my mass of um, sodium sulfite, Na2SO3, is going to be this number times by the molar mass of Na2SO3, which is 126.1. And if you do that, you will end up with it being 1.20 grams. So now you've worked out that, you know that the original uh, was 2.400 grams of hydrated sodium sulfate. So the mass of water in there is going to be 2.4 minus 1.2, which is equal to um, 1.2 grams. So moles of water is 1.20 divided by 18, which gives you 0.067. So you can now work out your um, ratio. So you know you've got your moles of um, sodium sulfite up here. Um, as being 9.525 times 10 to the minus 3. Your moles of water are 0.067. So you divide by the smallest one, which is that one, to give you that being 1, and that being that part there, Mike, 2, 7. So you have got 7 waters there. Right, final one. So I'd actually probably do the half equations first. So, uh, the half equations, you've got MnO4 minus um, becoming Mn2 plus, like so. Um, it tells you it's in acid conditions, so you need to add H plus there as well. You're obviously going to make water here. Um, and then if you look at your change in oxidation states, you've got manganate here as being um, in state plus 7 and here plus 2, so that's a change of, uh, plus 2 that should be, uh, 5, and uh, so you're going to need to have 5 electrons there as well, so let's just move that H plus over a little bit, um, and I'm going to pop in 5 electrons, plus, um, we're going to need to put our H plus in somewhere as well, um, so I've got my 5 electrons, I've got four oxygens here, so I need to have four waters there, which means I need eight H plus there. So um, let's write that up a little bit nicer for you. MnO4 minus plus five electrons plus eight H plus goes to Mn2 plus plus four H2O. Uh, for the next one, um, they've got me, they've given me SO3 to minus, that's got to become uh, sulfate 6, so SO4 to minus. Um, again, it's in acid conditions, so we've got H plus there as well. Um, so uh, let's have a look. I've lost an oxygen there somewhere, so maybe I'm going to have to add in my water the other side. So let's change that from H plus to H2O, and that would sort out that, and that means I'm going to have to make 2H plus that side. In terms of changing oxidation state, 
My sulfur there, ooh, is going to be plus four. There is plus six. So I'm also going to make on this side two electrons like so. Now we're going to add them together. So we just need to be aware that for uh, this top equation, this one's going to have to be times by two to give me 10 electrons. And this one is going to have to be times by five to give me 10 electrons. So let's give it a go. 2MnO4 minus plus 16H plus for that plus 5SO3 2 minus plus 5H2O is going to give me 2MN2 plus plus 8 H2O plus 5SO4 2 minus plus 10H plus. Okay, right, and now we start cancelling these down. Um, so uh, you can see I've got 10H plus there. So if I remove 10 H plus there, it means I've got 6 there. Um, and then also I can cancel down that 5 H2O there to give me 3 H2O there.